I'm Joe Bertolino, president of Southern Connecticut State University. Hi, and I'm Bill Leipold. I'm a member of the Rutgers University Newark community. And this evening, Bill and I will be presenting a program on social justice here at Southern Connecticut State during our week of social justice celebrations. So Bill and I are here um, this evening to talk to you and to be kind of, I guess, the evening kickoff for Social Justice Week, though we know that there have been a number of presentations throughout the course of the day. I want to thank you for finding your way out. I know there are about 50 or so people in this room, and so thank you for that. It means a lot to me and it means a lot to Bill that you have found your way out this evening. Um, as you know, I've been here for a total of three months. I'm having a wonderful time, and I want to thank you for the warm welcome and hospitality that you've given to both uh, Bill and I. So, for those of you that don't know, this is... Hi everyone, my name is Bill Leibold. I am the Assistant Vice Chancellor for Human Resources at Rutgers University of Newark in the great state of New Jersey. So, happy to be here. So, there are a couple things you need to know about us before we get this program started. Um, first, Bill and I are two white gay men. Surprise. <laughs> um, secondly, we are both members of our national of national fraternities, and we've been heavily involved. Of the two of us, I am probably a bit more conservative. Bill is a little bit more liberal. Oh, okay, stop. That's an understatement. Joe is super conservative in comparison. Tattoos, no piercing, no through. You're wearing slippers and a very bright vest. <laughs> I'm wearing old men's shoes, never mind, anyway. Um, and you should know that Bill and I, obviously, you know that we are partners. On Halloween, we celebrated our 23rd anniversary together. Um, for our heterosexual folks and straight folks in the room, that's like 65 straight years, just one nation. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to say So we're going to, tonight, tonight's presentation is going to be interactive. It's going to, um, it's, it, you need to be involved and participatory, so we will not be lecturing at you the entire time. So, Bill, why don't you get us started? So we like to start every program off on the same kind of space. What we like to do is we like to borrow from our friends at the, Amer at the Association for Fraternity Advisors. It says, I hereby have permission to be imperfect with regards to social justice. It's okay if I don't know all the answers, or if at times my misunderstandings, become, my ignorance misunderstandings become obvious. The first thing I want to say is there, there's, there's no expert on this issue of social justice. Several of us hear the conversation of diversity, social justice, multiculturalism, well, there's a difference between all of those, and we'll go through some of those this evening. And there is no such thing as an expert on this. Why? Each one of us has our own experience. Each one of us has our own path. Based upon the groups that we may see ourselves in, we may have some shared experience with those folks, but not one person in each one of those areas has the exact same experience. And so the conversation here is there can't be an expert. There can be lots of theories, and there are. There can be lots of conversations, we hope this is the beginning of one. But as you go through, we're hoping that by the end of the night, there's no one singular way to navigate this. We each have our own ways, we each have our own experiences, we each have our own method of engagement. We have a couple of rules for the program this evening. Of course, we've spent a lot of time over the course of the last three months talking about ensuring that we're treating people with dignity, respect, kindness, compassion, with civility. And that will always be for us the overarching rule of everything that we do and everything that we talk about. But for tonight, in addition to those things, we want you to know that first, we don't know everything. The fact of the matter is, is that we are two white, gay, privileged men. Period. I can't tell you what it's like to be a woman, a person of color, etc. Number two is take what you want from the program. So what we're going to do is we're going to offer a lot of activities, we're going to offer some definitions, we're going to offer some conversations. We're hoping that you're going to choose to take some of these activities and definitions and use them, challenge them, be able to use them in your organizations, be able to kind of begin a conversation. And I use the word begin. Some of us are in mid-conversation with understanding our privilege and our conversation around social justice. Some of us are just beginning. But what I would say is if anybody says they're near the end of the conversation, then we need to have a conversation about why you're near the end. 
because you haven't engaged with everybody and there's still lots of things going on. So take what you want from the program and be able to utilize it as you can. Number three, be willing to have an open mind to learn. We hope that that's why you're here. We hope that that's why maybe occasionally you go to class. We hope that's why you're here at Southern. All of those things are very important. Number four, feel free to ask questions. Now, Bill and I have been reflecting a little bit. Believe it or not, we have been speaking to college students for over 20 years. And we started speaking specifically about our relationship as, same, as a same gender couple and fraternity men who are openly gay. One of our favorite cartoons, it goes something like this, I hate anyone who's different than me. Black people, Jewish people, gay people, and especially smart people. <laughs> There's a good chance we all know or have heard of individuals who are afraid or uncomfortable with people who are different than they are for a variety of different reasons. We, we know, we, we know folks like this. So more often than not, folks come to these decisions or conclusions or belief systems um, perhaps because of stereotypes. We know what stereotypes are. So my question is really simple. From where do you get your stereotypes? Okay, very good. Parents or family members? Yes. The media. The media. Excellent. A couple others. Friends. Very good. Church. Religion has a huge impact on how we view the world. Some others. Cool. Education. Experiences. Experiences. Excellent. What else? A few others. Yourself. Your own experiences. Yourself. Okay. What else? Community. From the community. Describe 
the LGBTQ plus community. So, raise your hand, share with me a word to describe LGBTQ plus folk. Yes? Needy. 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 That was a polite yes. Mentally, Mentally ill. Ill. Confused. Confused. Okay. Say it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm good. I'm sorry. Somebody just walked away and said, it's a president just screaming out loud. What is going on in there? Because it was social justice week. Faggot. Yes, faggot. What else? Yes. Carpet muncher. Carpet muncher. <laughs> the facial expressions are here priceless. Yes. Batimon. Batimon. Yes. All right. So, take a deep breath. Now that we've, now that we've shared these words, or you've shared these words with us, we would like you to think about the people in your life that you know who are members of the LGBTQ plus community. Whether they are family, friends, fellow students, peers, employee, whomever in your life. And Bill and I would like to invite you to share an adjective that you would use to describe that person. Compassionate. Compassionate. Intelligent. Intelligent. Righteous. Righteous. Hardworking. Hardworking. Successful. <laughs> Successful. Successful. Strong. Strong. Happy. Happy. Funny. Funny. Loving. Loving. Good. Happy. Loving. Brave. Honest. Honest. Accepting. Accepting. Vibrant, kind-hearted, kind empathetic, empathetic. Creative. creative. Okay. Yes. Religious. Religious. Very good. I think you get a sense of where we're going. So, our first list of words. Uncomfortable as it was for some folks to say them and to hear them, um, for the most part, describe words that we hear and generally describe folks that we don't know or that the people saying them, they don't know. The second list of words are used to describe people we do know who are members of the LGBTQ plus community. So let's see what we have. We have a compassionate carpet muncher. We have a successful tranny. Um, we have an honest queer. Um, and we have a vibrant leather dyke tag. Okay, fair enough. What's interesting about these two list of words is Joe said the first list of words are folks that we usually don't know. They're usually passerbyers who have some kind of inkling about what it means to be LGBTQ. And the conversation, if you look at this, has a whole conversation around three things. Who we fuck, who we stop, and who we think. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, powers. It reduces the entire human experience to three things. They don't engage the conversation. They don't want to learn about the other person. They've made a decision based upon three things about what happens with when we start to look at the second list of words, we start to understand that this may include our parents, may include our best friends, our fraternity brothers, our sorority sisters. We start to realize it might be our mentors, the folks who we are in next to church. They're folks that we start to understand beyond certain labels, how they engage with human beings. We start to understand the humanness of what they have, what they bring, and how they engage. The conversation around social justice is not obviously around the first list. It's around this list. How do we engage each other so that we can start to understand the narratives so we can move away from creating these hierarchies, these conversations where folks don't have access, conversations around those statistics that we saw at the beginning of the video. Well, it just means that we have a lot to talk about and we will continue to have the conversation. So I would like to encourage us, and all of the members of our community, again, <coughs> engage these conversations, not only throughout the course of the week, our social justice week, but beyond. 
I think that the goal um, that I had presented to this community when I first arrived was centered on creating a, a creating a, a community that is centered on social justice and to have real conversations. Um, and those real conversations will continue to be difficult, challenging, painful, and hard, but necessary. So my hope is that we will continue to do that throughout the course of the year and forward. With that said, we'd like to leave you with this. An old man going along the highway came in the evening, cold and gray, to a chasm vast and deep and wide, through which was flowing a sullen tide. The old man crossed the twilight and the solid streams had no fear for him, but he turned when safe on the other side and built a bridge to stand the tide. Old man, said a fellow pilgrim near, you're wasting strength with building here. Your journey will end with the ending day. You never again must pass this way. You've crossed the chasm deep and wide. Why build you a bridge at the even time? The builder lifted his old gray head. Good friends, in the path I've come, there followeth after me today a youth whose feet must pass this way. This chasm that has been not to me, to that fair haired youth may a pitfall be. He too must cross the twilight dim. Good friend, I'm building the bridge for him. And so, Bill and I challenge you to think about the bridges that we are building in our community and to ensure that we are making every effort in our community to build bridges that create a welcoming environment for all members of this community. I want to thank you for coming out tonight. I want to thank you for sticking with us for the whole